what's going on, everybody? <clears throat> so I'm going to go over, um, let's see, I did the poll yesterday, and then I had a question of the day. So this is the question of the day. And uh, the poll I had yesterday was, just to put both of them up here, was I had OCH3. And what I wanted to know was if we do a birch reduction, are we going to get essentially our double bonds this way or are we going to get our double bonds that way reduction, okay? And if I'm not mistaken, I think um, the majority of, of you said this one, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go double check, but I think you said that one. It's actually this one right here, okay? Now, let me explain. And I'm gonna leave that up there because we'll get to that because you can see here that essentially we've done that transformation in there, so I kinda wanna put those two together. So what I wanna do here is let's, um, let's look at two different structures here, okay? So let's say we have this one with OCH3 and Let's have one with, um, let's say, um, trying to think of something good here. We'll have an aldehyde, okay? Now, when we look at this, what happens here in both cases, okay, is a sodium is essentially just gonna be an electron donator. So we're gonna have a single electron that we're going to come in and we're going to add. So you can imagine we can add this in a lot of different places, right? There's, there's a total of one, two, three, four, five positions. Now, what we can do is this sodium, this electron, if we look at the final products, could either potentially add there. You know what, let's just get rid of this one for now. It's taking up too much space. So we could either add it there or we could add it there. And you'll notice that I've got a single, um, a single headed arrow here, a fish hook. That means that we're only adding one electron. So if we did, let's look at these two, okay? All right, let's do this way. And let's see here. I realize I gotta start doing some numbering. So let's call this one, um, one path one, and that'll be path two, okay? So let's look at path one first. So if we've got a single electron, we know that if we have some sort of nucleophile, we can think of this electron as a nucleophile, we come in and attack to maintain our four bonds of carbon, we're gonna to have to push everything out of the way. So we can see that we'll push electrons, push electrons. So what will happen in this case is we're going to get our electron there. This double bond over here, we don't do anything to. But we have to flip that one and then we have to flip this up here. There's nothing for that to go to. So we're just gonna wind up putting those electrons there and that's going to be a minus charge, okay? And obviously that one's there as well. Now with this one in, in path one, we can see that we've generated, we always want our radical and our anion as far away from possible, from each other as possible. So the only way to do that is if we add it in para, or in the, in the para position relative to the OCH3, is to put it all the way up here. But the problem is, as we'll notice, this is an electron donating group and we've got a negative charge. This cannot stabilize that negative charge. All this can do is donate electron density and so that's like a recipe for disaster. So that one is not going to happen. Whereas if we went to two, if we looked at path two, Okay, so this right here will be two. We can see that we're, whoops, wrong color. We can see that we're gonna add our electron here now. And with this, we can push these electrons down and over. So what that's gonna do is we don't touch that one. That's gonna give us a little one there. But now our anion is over there, okay? Now we still have the same effect here, we can say in one respect, is that this is still an electron donating group. So this isn't going to help us with the negative charges at all. But what we can notice is that we're not donating electrons directly into the negative charge. What we've got is we've got this negative charge out to the side, okay? So it's not a perfect situation because we don't really have anything to stabilize that, but you can see this is gonna be better right here um, because now we're not gonna worry about that negative charge being right on top of that. And then to finish the mechanism out, we can imagine that negative charge, we've got ammonia in here as well. So there's also NH3. So what can happen is that negative charge We can put a proton there. There's obviously another one there as well. And then we can do another sodium, can donate electron. And now that we have two, that's a negative. And then we wind up, whoops, 
then we wind up getting our H there as well. So you can see that we do a single electron um, transfer. I don't know if that's the correct word, but we, we donate in an electron, get a radical anion, protonate the anion, then throw another electron in to get the other anion, um, and then protonate it. So it's going to be two because we get that negative charge is not going to be a problem. Okay. So hopefully that makes a bit sense, a bit of sense. Now let's look at this. So we can see from here, now we're going to be able to understand why that's doing that, okay? Now in this case, what we want to be able to do is go from here to there. Now we can clearly see in this case, right, that for example, if we took this, we had our carbonyl, and we decided to do our sodium and ammonia, we know that the product that this would give us now um, is going, would be that. And we can clearly see that we want these double bonds kind of like a, um, um, a runway. We want them moving away from our carbon source, not towards it. Now the question is, why does it do that? Um, I'm just going to draw the intermediate here. But what happens in this case is if we had something like this, this is an electron withdrawing group. So this is pulling electron density out. We can see our intermediate is we'd have a radical there. We'd have an anion there and now see the anion is stabilized through resonance. So what we can see here is that if you have an electron withdrawing group versus an electron donating group, the electron withdrawing group is going to form the double bonds moving towards it. An electron donating group, which is this, is going to be moving essentially away from that, okay? So we can see in this case that we can't do our dissolving metal reduction first because then we run into this problem. So that means that we have to do our reduction first. And um, there's a lot of different ones. You can do the Wolf-Kishner, which is H2NNH2 base. And what that'll wind up doing is essentially clipping off that carbonyl completely. So that'll give us this intermediate here. Okay. So that's not a big, there's other ones. I think there's, um, what is it? Zinc, uh, mercury, amalgam. Um, you can also do that as well. There's, there's a couple ways, but the wolf Kishner is the one that I always think about. We can reduce that down to the alkyl. And now we can clearly see with the alkyl that that's an electron donating group. That can't help stabilize that negative charge. So we know that in this case, when we do our dissolving metal, that that has to wind up putting our groups here. Because remember, we get the intermediate negative or radical with the minus, and that can't help stabilize. So that's our intermediate. And then we wind up protonating that. All right. I think that's it. Let me just scroll through here and see if anybody did any comments. All right. Oh, greetings from Brazil. Well, greetings from the United States. And then O-N-U-R-E-R -E wave. I'm going to wave back under here. Hey, what's going on? Actually, to everybody there, I'm going to wave to everybody. <laughs> um, let's see if there are any comments here. I don't think so. Uh, Medicine Jordan, thank you. Well, thank you for coming on here. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, Medicine Jordan, once again, smiley face. Um, hello with the hearts. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, Sanja P27, um, all right, thumbs up to you. Thank you so much for coming on here. Uh, Warsha Musa, hi, hello. Um, Faisa, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing this, so F-A-I-S-A-L-J-A-F-R-I-14, thumbs up. J-P-H-L-N, hey, what's going on? Sopari, hey, what's going on, guys? I guess it's this one, I'm doing it wrong. And then Victor, great explanation. I appreciate it. All right, so that's it. Um, and until next time, hope you guys have a good one.